<sighs> All right. Like, <laughs> I see the writing on the wall. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not the. I'm not the most uh, facile tonight. That's why we should bring up our, our amazing friends. Yeah, what? Can, I, should... I, I'm under the weather right now, so I'm in another world. Right Let's now. put the onus on the the bonus. <laughs> Let's showbiz talk okay. for. Let's let's hinge the show on our special guests. Yeah, let, let's, let's put the onus on the bonus. <laughs> it's an old showbiz term. <laughs> let's put the onus on the bonus. Right. Don't tell me you've never heard that phrase. Well, I know I, I know what the onus is. Yeah. It's on the bonus, but yeah. they, but they don't know who the bonus is. Well, I tweeted what the bonus was, and uh, and he did make it. Uh, uh, please welcome my impish, quixotic, energetic, incredible, genius, intimidating, uh, uh, delightful friend, Mitch Hurwitz, to the stage. Have, a, have, a, have any seat you like. Do whatever you like. What, them? Okay, go ahead. Sit off there. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's Mitch Hurwitz. All right. Uh, there's a mic in there. there that was the thing that your anus was on. <laughs> so, yeah. I, Dan. First of all, I can tell you, I, you have never seen an artist prepare the way Dan does backstage. Can I, can I lift the veil a little sure, bit? Sure, sure, sure. So he gets here at like four in the afternoon, and it's calisthenics. <laughs> and then newspaper after newspaper. It's unbelievable <laughs> Just looking for the headline process. <laughs> yeah, I look for, I look for out, funny ads. And then the grooming. The I mean, grooming. the grooming, which I'd heard about. <laughs> you had only you. heard about I'm so, I truly. Dan I, wakes up, uh, actually. He doesn't wake up. He wakes up at 6 a.m., as you know, and gets straight to work and starts writing community by 7 at, at Paramount. <laughs> right, yeah. But at 4.30, while he's still asleep, a team of Korean women come in and groom him in his sleep. <laughs> That's why every yeah. hair is always... always... And punch-up. Yep. Uh, no, but I, I really admire... I, I make this joke as a, as a statement of admiration because you ha your process is so effortless. It just comes out of you. Honestly, I, uh, my process is really tortured. Like, do you want to see me try to think of a joke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell okay, me one about a caterpillar. Oh, okay. <laughs> see what I mean? It's yeah, just yeah, not... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like much. your pro... It's too much. Dan, show him your process. It doesn't process. podcast. Thinking, thinking hey, guy walks into a bar, rape! <laughs> See, I don't. Yeah, yeah. it's. I, Mitch here with everybody. What, thanks for coming, Mitch. So whatever comes out of my mouth. Your band is amazing too. They're so cute. Uh, the, the band is good. Um, uh, so, so I was speaking of work ethic. Uh, I wanted to ask you about your days at Fox working on Arrested Development, world's uh, smartest comedy. Would you, would you like there to be no more Arrested Development? We could just speak candidly? Uh, no, I wouldn't like there to be. Because that might be the result of me speaking candidly. What do no, you mean? no, no. I think our situations were pretty similar. I, yeah. I do. I, I think I, I created a more of a, uh, you know, a sort of a polished social exterior than you did. But I feel like... <laughs> But I didn't have to work with Chevy Chase. Right. <laughs> but you did have to work. I've heard, I've heard backstage m gossips and murmurs. Your, yeah. your family was no easy. Uh, no. They, they, they weren't like a bu like Community is blessed with uh, a bunch of people. That Except for Joel. I know. It. They're amazing. Yeah. yeah. Joel is a and bit Ken. of a bitter pill yeah. to have to swallow. And there's a girl named Gillian. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. She's a, she's, she's, she will throw a tantrum if yeah. you pronounce the G I wrong. And her. She throws hardcover books around that she that she she only bought because she heard about them on NPR, uh, and, yeah. and, and she she got them because of the hardness of the cover because she wants to throw them at people. <laughs> and if that is uh, let's just say drinking and let's just say gambling and let's just say violence. And they, let's... I got to spend a few days over there, and uh, they really were amazing. Yeah, and they lionize you. Yeah, what is that? Wait, wait, what is the word when you compare someone to a lion? The, uh, <laughs> whatever that is, they do to you. And they'll be like, oh, here comes Dan. He can smell their red meat. 
Like, oh, I'm sure they're that, lionizing I'm them. absolutely positive that it's no exaggeration that you spent more time with them than I did the whole 13 episodes. Because I don't, okay. and I hope that they understand that that I don't, that, that means that, 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 that what I do, that the footsteps aren't there because I was uh, <laughs> masturbating in the bushes. Yeah. I mean, I think they know. Uh, but I don't. No, they they really they all admire you, and I do think it's because they haven't spent much time with you. <laughs> uh, no, they really. And they're all so pr- they're incredibly proud as they should be to be on such a, a great creative show. And the one that that I got to sit in on was no exception. It's so out there. It's so creative. It's unbelievable. And I got to the set. And I really, there was like a big chasm between, like, you could tell. They thought, oh, this is like a show creator guy, a guy who can give us jobs and everything. And by the end, they really started to see me more as an equal, so I got the hell out of there. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> you got the luxury. And yeah, that was a close one. And your, 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 your bit was, uh, was, was amazing. I've oh, seen it was that, that crazy. Shrub, shrub cut together. It's really But funny. no, I have to say, actually, like, like your cast, our cast was great. They're wonderful. But they hated each other, some of them. No, they just functioned truly as a family in a great way. You know, we had like a couple of leading men as brothers, and there was a lot of stuff going on there. And they loved each other. They were, and they, you know, competed. And, uh, but for me, the challenge, it was always, you know, Fox. It was always dealing with the network. It was all the same stuff you do. But as far as what I found out this season, because, and I'm, I'm an honest person, because the, these people, if they, once they fire you and bring you back, not because they respect you, but because if they brought you back, it's because they don't give a shit anymore. Uh, for that reason, I have been left to my own devices, and I have truly found that I was always the problem. <laughs> like, I, I, well, and I, some of your devices. I, I've seen a couple of the devices. Yeah, we well, left to my own actual yeah, that one self-built device devices. Yeah, is really offensive. I'm, 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 I'm the Steve Jobs of of, of, of Cronenbergian uh, uh, acting Kinda implements. Yeah, implements. yeah, I have a I have a, I have a fake twin that that uh, that I invented a lot of weird curvy. Uh, alien uh, tailbone looking things that I, I claim helped you act um, there's a table full of them and they're all flecked with uh, uh, no fluids. but the amazing thing about this Sony about your situation Sony because I know they haven't been around this year and I don't think it's because of that whale bone thing I think it's I, I think it's, it's that I think they I've always thought in television they want you to push them out of it really yeah I mean the whole system because they want to be able up, to say well, yeah, maybe that's it. They don't want to be accountable. But also, you know, they know the only hits that have ever come for them are the ones where the guy said, fuck you, we're not, I'm not doing it your way. But that's, and, that's too selfless. I don't believe that they're that selfless. That's why they're, they're still putting in their, their whole system where they've got all these checks and balances. And then it takes somebody to come along. And, you know, on The Simpsons, they don't give notes. Right, this, but but those was, are all those are all money making things, and they never left you alone until you. No. you, you, you they were, they were, I mean, you and I were we share we're, we're yeah. on the simian branch that yeah. is the low rated great ape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we, we had no tail, and, yeah. uh, and it's called the not the non wealthy ape. <laughs> It's the one branch of the ape that didn't become super wealthy. But 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 you, like the last temptation of Christ, the guy is put up on the on the cross. What's his name? Uh, Christ. And uh, <laughs> he read for Michael Bluth. And arrested. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, but everything was so on the nose. You yeah, know I mean? it was, it was, everything yeah, it was so is uh, overstated. <laughs> For a moment, you get to see, like, like, like Christ is up there on the cross, and you get, I think that's the conceit of that movie and book and whatever, is that for a moment you get to see. Okay, it's all fine and well to know that the guy got put up there and forgive him, God. They don't know what they're doing and all that stuff. But for a moment in that story, what you get to explore and see is, okay, what if he had said. In a moment of, of passion, uh, a moment of selfishness. All right, time out. Forget it. I don't want to be Jesus ever again. Uh, and you get to see that it would have sucked. That, that 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 in the long run it would have been shitty. I feel like 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 politically, season five, they they like they said, okay, what if we did leave you alone, you preening, whining fucker? And the truth is, we all like 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 I am my own worst enemy. Like, well, you I need will something. stay at that office until that the the, the script is supposedly perfect, but I uh, it any. It, 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 Ever perfect. Wait, Dan, you're saying that, that you're not getting any like uh, any trouble from the uh, from the mucky mucks. They're not. They're not. They're not making my life difficult at all. No, no. It, you lose something to rebel against. I mean, that is part of it. Part of it is you want to kind of stoke the, the fires of that anger a little bit. We did a thing in the last season where we had a Google car. You know, that was going to be the, like the funny vehicle because I'm all for just anything else funny you can get in there, get it in there. 
So, and I remember once we were in a parking lot, and there were all these like air conditioning trucks, and Jim Valley said to me, Look, season six. Uh, everybody's got a funny car. But uh, so we had Jason driving the Google car, and it was just not that funny. And then we heard that Google wouldn't let us use it. We were like, Yes, we have a point of view now. Right. You know? I get to be mad company, at something. But, yeah, that we're mad at it. And I think that's part of It's oppositional defiant disorder. Yeah. It's, 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 it's like, it's like someone's, someone's going to make me mad. We brought, we brought, we brought, uh, some integrated marketing into as we've done to great success in the past and they're they're really cool and then they and then they said that they uh well we never uh we never call that that and i was like yes oh, and yeah. i was like now i know what the well, scene's we about are calling it a filet of fish sandwich now my friend <laughs> or now the scene's it's about on. how you don't call it that now how you like me <laughs> and, I, and i really that really made me step back i go is that your whole shtick waiting around to be told what not to do it and helps. then you talk I mean, about how you can't do it like, like I mean, you know, there's always something to be outraged about, right? And I think, like, I remember we did this, this ninth or the tenth episode of, of the third season. It was the first time we'd really gone super meta. We'd done kind of things like that. But uh, it, it, we had no point of view in the show. It was just something, nothing tied together. Like, the kid was going to a private school, and they were throwing a dinner. It was just nothing. And then I got a call saying, you're canceled. And it was like, <laughs> best thing that ever happened to show nine. <laughs> and that was the one that we were, they were making all these comments about, you know, now there's going to be 3D segments and all that stuff. It feels a little trite now, actually. I did, I did, we did an episode this year where I wrote it in anger uh, in like six hours uh, out of sarcasm. I know that I know what that is. I read, I read something online that was somebody saying I, something. We can't say what and that I, is. And I, and I was like, I know. fuck this. Fuck this. You want to uh, yeah. see this shit? Fuck it. Fuck it. I know. <laughs> and it's probably, it's really one of the better episodes of the season. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's me going, yeah, everyone want to go home by six? Fine. You're going home by six. See how good the show is. And yeah. it's, it's fine. <laughs> fine episode. <laughs> A story, B story, uh, no, I get it. it. A couple matter. jokes what, Dan, per page. Dan or Mitch, uh, well, I'll start with Dan. Like, what, 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 what's been the recipe, like, climate-wise, for the worst episode of this season? Like, uh, d- definitely without I a doubt. I hope it wasn't putting me in it. <laughs> I'm better. Definitely was. without a doubt. It's 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 knowing in advance what you, that you want to do X. Now, uh, uh, you know, in the past, that some of, some of the episodes are. That, that that's always that can generate your best episode, knowing that yeah. you want to do it's gonna be a blank episode, um, but it, it without a doubt when you are up at four a.m. on a Sunday when the call time is seven a.m. Monday and you're writing the scene and no one knows what the fuck is going on, the reason for the trouble starts with. Someone saying, we have to do a Dungeons and Dragons sequel. We have to do a zombie Halloween. We have to do Christmas is going to be this because it's not organic. And it's and so. Yeah, well, it's kind of like knowing what your theme is ahead of time. And you'll see people, you'll see. You think Ryan Murphy listens to this show? <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's like, oh, these are some good pointers. I'm going to use that one for American Horror Story. I just picture him as having an Irish accent. <laughs> Murphy. Yeah. I like to make the nice TV shows for the nice people. <laughs> oh, I just my experience though, he Blue seems boots. like a very nice guy. Green clovers, yellow stars. <laughs> Little purple glees. <laughs> purple glees. <laughs> I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> he shoots at his. But I would. Right I, re- I remember he would say things when he was doing uh, nip tuck and talk about how you know I wanted to do a show about superficiality and about how people are as only as deep as their skin. And I thought, no, you didn't. <laughs> I mean, you came up with that at some point. <laughs> but it, it is whenever you start off, it's always a lie what you're starting with. I mean, it's, it's what I was just praising you about about this show. Like I see you figure out your point as you're making it. Oh, definitely. Right, yeah. which I really admire because otherwise you're kind of full of shit you're going in with an idea of what you want to say already and I don't know I remember pitching Arrested and saying the concept was going to be it's about a family that loses everything and is much happier because of it and <laughs> right and none of that happened they didn't they didn't really lose that much <laughs> they, they just, weren't they happier. just sat around and yeah. stayed quasi rich but very witty yeah, yeah right, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
they're the funniest family in the world, but... They are. They're really funny. The material possession ever. Yeah. And it really was the idea of, like, you know, I said, oh, you know, the husband and wife that haven't been sharing a bedroom, they're now going to have to share a bedroom. And it was all these sort of family values. And then the first, like, three episodes, that got thrown in my face a lot. Aren't they supposed to learn that it's better? <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I'm building to it. They're going to learn it's better. <laughs> They're going to learn it's much better we had a po- to be our, poor. <laughs> our, our, our post super, but didn't you, didn't you work with Jake Ost? Uh, yeah, well, uh, well, on a one show, uh, not like, on a Doing do do the last couple episodes of season three, uh, there was a point, because it was like, well, how did season three end? Chang was dressed as Napoleon, and <laughs> <laughs> there was a dragon in the sky, and Abed's head was the sun. I don't know. Like, like, just and, the, college, the, the community college experience. And, 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 yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sound mixing it with Jake. And I was like, Jake, could, could you think, is there a way we can get, get, go to some kind of Japanese anime library and find some kind of something that sounds like a light sword, but also can we mix it? Because it needs to be funny, too. It needs to be an ironic take, like an ersatz <laughs> light sword. Uh, it sounds Japanese, but it needs to be like the Americanized version because it's in Jeff's imagination. And, and, and something something like that. And, ja- and, and Jake Oz said... Uh, uh, I, I signed on to a show about people going to a community <laughs> college. He was he was being uh, ironic, so of course. He's a good sport, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> but 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 I'm, I'm, I was curious, like like how, how uh, when you're when you're surfing the wave of of, of uh, we get, yes, we get all have this? whatever you want. There's water. There's For the home audience. You have no idea the array that's out here right now. <laughs> the yeah. beverage array. I'm in the Kettle One Alliance now. I don't know if you're. You got in. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I... now it's and it's you guys against what like Captain Bacardi or whatever. <laughs> Well, that's Ryan Murphy. Is, uh, oh, uh, oh, he's Jameson's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You better not take me, Jameson's. Uh, I, 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 I hear the alliance is, is in a, a bitter struggle right now. Isn't, uh, isn't against the, uh, the against Ryan Murphy's Bacardi Alliance yeah. or uh, Jameson, yeah. Alliance? whatever. Empire, his Bacardi Empire. Yeah, there's a there's a, all of the ma- five major liquors uh, right. are like and, the boroughs in uh, and Pod is working its way into, which is going to throw off the alliance. <laughs> yeah, like you can't believe it's going to be like. Those Japan, are, yeah, and uh, what was that? The, well, that's uh, Netflix, probably right? The Second the World War. I don't know the wars in order. <laughs> what was two? I saw the first one. <laughs> um, but I want to know how how when when you were when you're when you were running a network show. How, what, what like, what, how? I appreciate you even trying to ask because you already know the answer. You're trying to think of a way that we can get some information out to them. But you no, know, it's the exact same experience. No, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't okay. know. Like, like I want to know how dire it got in terms of like the, the uh, distance between what was in your brain and what they were shooting on set. I just want to know chronologically like how bad it got. Because there's stories about David Milch literally. They would. This is drama, and this is David Milch. Yeah. Totally different thing. But there would be. A, there's stories about. There's a dude in his parking space waiting. Wow. He pulls up into the parking space, and like David Milch rolls out of the car onto his back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because and starts back, right? and starts <laughs> saying things into the air, and the and the yeah. and the twenty year old collects it in a jar and throws it at at, at the set. Uh, the, 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 yeah. the, and, the, and, and then they shoot that as it explodes out of the jar. Like, like, like. No, it was not. It wasn't like that at all. It was really. I mean, I, it got. Was that Deadwood? What was that? <laughs> was yeah. it, it was NYPD Blue. Okay. Yeah. Was that? Do you remember that documentary? You saw him on no, his back. Yeah, there was a shot of him on his back. Just no, but somebody had a bad back, but he actually yeah. would like he would show. He would sometimes he would, you know, they would he would be laying on his back on set, calling out lines to the actors, and they'd shoot him. That's what I heard. They shoot the actors. Oh, I see. <laughs> no, that's not. An Let's option. try it. Maybe it's maybe it's great <laughs> for creativity. Shall we get down there? And <laughs> it wasn't like that at all. In fact, I I see. I always had this illusion of myself as being reasonable, and then it got. A, I was accused once of of uh, you know it being rope a dope is what it was called. Because you basically. said you were a nice guy. Well, I mean, I I would try to like I made it an effort not to be defensive, like. I, that's which is very hard to do when you're hearing notes because you just want everything out of your mouth. If you've created anything, you want to say, "No, you don't get it. That's not. I don't want to do it your way." But if you can, I believe in like trying not to be offensive and trying to let in what people are saying. And but then I wouldn't always act on it. You know, I mean, I would try to take in like, okay, so what they're saying is they they don't see that this character cares for his son, and and that's a drag. I want to up that, but I also don't want to sell it out, and you know, all those things. Um, but I, 
I worked so hard on addressing their notes that I, in a funny way, I don't think they even saw that I was doing it because I would, you know, I could change this sentence a little bit and I could put this scene earlier, but they didn't want that. They wanted so You're not going to believe me, but I, the exact, I, I'm exactly sure, I'm the same you. way because yeah. I, I came up doing improv. So I would go, there's no difference between someone in a suit saying, could you put a dog in it or, or could Annie's care? I'm not tracking Annie's character in this scene. There's no difference between that and bringing up someone from the audience and ha- having them do the sound effects. It can be invigorating right and, and there's a whole creativity that comes out of like okay you've got this house it's built this is the foundation but let's see if I move the stairs all I have to do is kind of bolster the stairs and still get to the second and what they're thinking is no we thought you were going to bulldoze it right and so sometimes we they go like well I don't understand there's no, you're not following my notes I was like well no, I'm following the note behind your note yeah. I mean you were you were you were yeah. saying that you wanted a flower on the guy's head but what you meant was you you, you there, there wasn't a prettiness to the scene yeah and so I did that with by the guy punching the the the, the, the dog. Right. Yeah. <laughs> punching the ugly dog. The, the, because the ugly Getting dog. Getting rid of yeah. one ugly he animal. Punished the ugly dog by punching Add it. an ugly animal, remove it. I don't know. It's I just. The I was, I was probably like I would try. Like, I, yeah, like, but, like, yeah. a, like a relatively large volume of, their, of, their, of, of notes that are given to me. No, do I was always very surprised that they did not see that I was doing that. And then I would get really specific notes. There was at one point where somebody said to me, Why are you doing this joke three times? <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I really was like, oh, God, should, Am I doing is that, that? trite? Oh, like, God. should it be five times? Well, oh, no. we, have we, why is one a setup and one, why is a thing and why is one a punchline? I remember, I remember the joke. It was when it was Job talking about, it was just this little flight of fancy where someone said, Job said, did you see the new poof? Which was a, what the magic magazine was called in a restaurant. <laughs> And then Joe kind of misinterpreted and said, well, Gary, the new PA, is he, is he gay? Oh, God, I did something that could be taken the wrong way. And then we see really, I think we see four things that he did that could be taken the wrong way. And the last of them, which is the one that this executive pointed out, was him with Gary on his lap on a, on a chair, <laughs> rocking back and forth, saying, well, it's not doing it now. And both of them just looking and trying to feel what the chair is doing. Why are you doing that so many times? Why can't you just do it once? Yeah, why, why and I just... it really was a, it was a fundamental uh, understanding shift for me when I realized, oh, you think I'm being an artist or being something that's going to cost you money. I'm trying to make this popular. Right. But that was the fundamental <laughs> misunderstanding. This is my version of you, mainstream comedy. There is absolutely. no such thing. I don't. Th- I hope there isn't. I would think that they were. They would be a person that you would, whose stuff you had never seen because they wouldn't get off the starting block. There's no such thing as a TV comedy writer. Listen to those right. words. TV. Right. Yeah. Right. Comedy. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Before yeah. you get to the word writer, you have long since made the decision to sell out. <laughs> <laughs> you That's want right. people to like you. It's yeah. like saying magician. Seuss. Yeah. Recluse magician. <laughs> Reclusive magician. <laughs> what? Like you're, you're not going to be one of those artsy fartsy magician masseuses, are you? Yeah, we're nothing. Like, the guy who says who needs someone to know that the corner and, disappeared, yeah, and then I, rubs your shoulders. No, I'd want people to be happy. Well, why does it have to be a French franc that disappears? Why can't it be a half dollar, an American half dollar? <laughs> I know you don't want to dumb it down. <laughs> like, like they they preemptively like make you feel like a snob, but it's like no, I am trying as hard as I can. That's the sad fact. I'm trying as hard as I can. Well, you and I. Both both made, uh, I don't even know if it was a decision, but it was based on our personalities. Let's do a show that we would like. I mean, there are. I people learned it in from you. Field. I don't know what your excuse is. I swear to God, I, le- I learned from watching Arrested Development. It was the moment when the Bluths, for the third time in the show, uh, lost their money, ma- made fun of someone for being cowardly, and revealed that the, the the family as a whole does not know what chickens sound like. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. and everyone's going. Cook, cook, and, and Jason Bateman's going, has anyone in this family heard a chicken? Yeah. And I, I was like, holy shit. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, holy shit, comedy can be so layered and all this stuff. What it was was, holy shit, I'm supposed to be making myself laugh. I'm supposed to wow. be wow. – like there is no um, – 
There, there, yeah. there, there's no Listen. difference between the job of, of being funny for other people and being funny for yourself. I, it is the same thing. It is the crazy thing about... Oh, Appla- that's, applause that's in this crowd that will get you. I, I love somebody who can applaud themselves. <laughs> I, 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 I denounced racism the yesterday. The Crickets. These people are... Oh, no, that's very these nice. These people hate minorities. They love comedy. I, I, <laughs> I, there are a lot of people. And they were here yesterday. I don't know. Sorry. I love the Saturday practice shows. This thing is so nailed down. Am I up? Did you, was that your line? <laughs> rigorously rehearsed. Rigorously, rigorously rehearsed. Mitch, Mitch. Oh, yeah. don't add lip. <laughs> uh, yeah. We I open in like... two nights, you guys. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I, was, I want to see you guys here at 7 a.m. and dress for movement. <laughs> but that, but that is a, Are the Cirque guys coming, or is it still us just marking them off with tape? Uh, they'll, they'll, they'll be here. Because they're going to throw us when they start doing their gymnastics. Uh, but there is a, good inter- a question a good interviewer would ask you in there, which is, where did you learn it from? Because you're a couple years older than me. No, I listen. It's very nice that you say that you learned it from me, but you, we're all... No, like, I'm, I I'm not kidding. I'm telling you. In terms of, in terms of specifically in terms of when sitting down to write a TV comedy script, I absolutely learned it learned it from you I also learned I picked up I, I, like like Tina Fey doing 30 Rock like I, I definitely was like holy shit this is this is a pace that you can have but I would argue I don't know if she'd disagree that she learned it, she got that from you I don't know I, I don't know if I you, think she'd disagree uh, <laughs> but 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 I think that you I changed things with the, I, got, with I don't the, know uh, if you watch Nip Tuck I got a lot of it <laughs> um, I, I will say I think that I remember being a kid this will date me a little bit um, uh, and, and watching Get Smart and thinking as a, like a little kid how come all the shows sound the same but there's <laughs> one where it doesn't sound the same it doesn't it, and you know the, basically what I was getting at is like it's a guy's sense of humor right. whatever you think of that sense of humor it was clear that that was like Buck Henry and, and Mel Brooks um, and for me I think I remember seeing like Larry Sanders show that was a revelation I remember seeing episodes where it would just end and you'd have to do a little thinking yourself. You have to say, oh, he's in hell. <laughs> he's in hell. You know, they didn't explain it. He didn't apologize. He did. And that was amazing to me. And, and I also came up with a lot of writers that would say things like, well, we could do the old... That was said a lot in a lot of rooms I was in. And I remember at that point thinking, like, I don't want to ever do the old. Yeah. But unfortunately... I often want to do the old. I, 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 I strive, I scramble for it. I go, oh, 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 this Isn't could, this could be like where... the old thing because I don't know what I'm doing. And like, if, if I, but if that's because I... you're, you're inventing it every time. That's what I try to do. Try to invent it every time, and that's the only way you're going to laugh. But then and... it's just a bunch of people with their heads up their asses. T- I don't know. I, I just like, like I, I, don't know what, I don't know which version of me is more marketable. Is it the version that uh, is trying to be like other people, or is it the version that uh, no. is... No, it's, I mean, listen, we're all, nobody's that independent. I mean, I, I I probably could go through an episode of Arrested Development and say, oh, that's an Albert Brooks thing, that's a Woody Allen thing, that's a John Cleese thing. That's, you know, they, it all gets filtered through somehow. But for the most part, if you're trying to make yourself laugh, you know, we happen to have chosen a field that w- neither of us are really right for because television is all about repetition. That's what it does best. Uh, maybe up until the current era. Amen. Now let's make an edit here, and for the podcast listeners, there's a lo- there's this brief silence, and then some clicking sounds, and then two gunshots. <laughs> could we just get a could we get a gas but it's got to be clean no laughter just everyone going <gasps> <gasps> so that would be amazing and, 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 and then, be so and then, good. And then uh, 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 about like a three second silence and then slow applause <laughs> uh, I, but, but, but preceded by I think I know how to help them <laughs> Murphy. <laughs> Ryan Murphy. You just need some voodoo magic <laughs> from the bayou. <laughs> Irish, the bayou? Vo- Irish voodoo? <laughs> I think, uh, am I talking about the same guy? Is he, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the glee guy is also the voodoo witch guy, right? The voodoo witch guy. He was raised in the bayou yeah, and then yeah. he went to Ireland. <laughs> And then he decided to comment on, on superficiality in America. <laughs> that's why that's so rich. 